Hello and welcome to Undead Gaming News, your one-stop shop for all things gaming. I'm your host Zombie and first up this week, Epic Games have announced that they're no longer going to be providing online services or servers for 17 of their older games and they're also going to end access to certain additional games entirely. The shutdowns have already started but they won't be completed until January the 24th and according to their announcement, Epic described their decision to quit servicing some online games as part of their move toward solely supporting Epic online services with its unified friends system, voice chat features, parental controls and parental verification features. But the full list of affected games are as follows. 1000 Tiny Claws, Dance Central 1, 2 and 3, although Epic notes that Dance Central VR Online Multiplayer will remain available. Green Day Rock Band, Monsters Probably Stole My Princess, Rock Band 1, 2 and 3, although again Epic notes that Rock Band 4 Online Multiplayer will remain available. The Beatles Rock Band, Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars, Unreal Gold, Unreal 2 The Awakening, Unreal Tournament 2003 and 2004, Unreal Tournament 3, although Epic notes that it has plans to bring back online features via the Epic Online services in the future for Unreal Tournament 3, and Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition. Epic is of course performing a few total shutdowns, meaning players will lose complete access to the following titles, Battle Breakers, Unreal Tournament Alpha, Rock Band Blitz, Rock Band Companion App, and Sing Space. Although they are offering refunds for any purchases made in-game for Battle Breakers, as long as the purchases were made before December the 14th of 2022. Sticking with Epic Games, we have an update on a lawsuit that was launched against them back in October of 2022. A Canadian law firm launched the lawsuit against Epic Games on behalf of parents as they were contacted by parents who claimed that their children had become dependent on Fortnite. The firm compared Fortnite to cocaine and tobacco claiming that Epic knowingly put on the market a very addicting game which was also geared towards youth. It believes that the case has the same legal basis as a 2015 class action lawsuit against tobacco companies for not informing customers about the danger to their health. That lawsuit has now been given a green light to proceed by a judge in Quebec. The Canadian law firm also cited a 2018 story in which a British behavioural specialist said that Fortnite is like heroin. The lawsuit claims that Epic Games made use of experts during the development of Fortnite to ensure that it would be maximally addictive to players and does not inform people of the risks and dangers associated with the use of Fortnite when they're creating their player profiles. It also accuses Epic of keeping kids hooked once they're in through the promise of prizes and prestige, including the Fortnite World Cup, which offers more than $30 million in prize money. One player cited in the lawsuit, who was 13 when the lawsuit was filed, had allegedly gone from playing a few hours a week to several hours a day in the course of two years and often plays until 1am. Another who is 10 argues with his parents about playing Fortnite and becomes very aggressive and vulgar while playing. The 10 year old has also spent almost $600 in Fortnite V-Bucks although it's not clear whether that was done with the parental knowledge or not. The lawsuit also cites that the World Health Organization's recognition of video game disorder as a disease to support its claim along with various media-focused reports targeting Fortnite, claiming it's bad for kids. The approval of the class action is only the beginning of the process of course, but the judge declared that the parents involved have a defensible case to make. Epic of course sees the matter very differently, with Epic spokesperson Natalie Minose saying, We have industry-leading parental controls that empower parents to supervise their child's digital experience. Parents can receive playtime reports that track the amount of time their child plays each week and require permission before purchases are made so that they can make the decisions that are right for their family. We've also recently added a daily spending limit by default for players under the age of 13. We plan to fight this in court. The recent decision only allows the case to proceed. We believe the evidence will show that this case is meritless. That's not the end of Epic Games' legal issues with Fortnite though, as they've now signed a $520 million settlement with the US Federal Trade Commission. As they have alleged, children's privacy laws have been violated due to Fortnite along with widespread dark patterns that have tricked millions of players into making unintentional purchases. The FTC announced the record-setting agreements, which has been split into two lump sums. The bigger $275 million penalty is a result of Epic breaking the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, according to the FTC, and represents the largest penalty ever obtained for violating an FTC rule. The FTC clarifies that Epic knowingly collected personal data from children without first obtaining parents' verifiable consent. The FTC also focuses on the fact that Fortnite enables text and voice chat by default, which they allege harmed children and teens. Epic will have to launch a comprehensive privacy program that addresses the problems identified in the FTC's complaint 
and obtain regular independent audits. Epic will also pay $245 million in direct refunds, which is the FTC's largest refund amount in a gaming case, and its largest administrative order in history. In other news though, Take-Two Interactive have issued a takedown notice after Goat Simulator 3 released an ad showing footage from September's massive GTA 6 leak. The official Goat Simulator 3 ad gave an overview of an NPC named Sean. It was just a little promotional video that was meant to get eyes on the sequel, of course, in a way that's consistent with the game's goofy tone. But the developers superimposed Sean into some B-roll footage of the GTA 6 leak, which of course gained the attention of Take-Two Interactive's legal team, who promptly issued the takedown notice. I'm sure Coffee Stain, of course, knew that this would happen, and were just trying to create enough controversy to create more attention towards Goat Simulator 3, so that they can hopefully sell more units, especially considering Take-Two was also taking down any scrap of the leak back in September, so they're obviously going to do it again if it pops up anywhere. But in other news, the official PlayStation blog have revealed a release window for Marvel's Spider-Man 2, as developer Insomniac Games provided them with a time frame of fall 2023, so it will most likely have a trailer in the state of play this year. They also shared a special message from the creative director of Insomniac Games, which has the same release window at the end. In other news, it's been announced that Hogwarts Legacy has been delayed, but not on all platforms. The PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions will now release on April 4th, 2023. The Nintendo Switch version has also been delayed to July the 25th, 2023, but the PS5, Xbox Series and PC versions of the game will still be released on February the 10th, 2023 as planned. It's unclear why the Switch version of the game is being delayed several months after the PS4 and Xbox One versions, but it's also worth remembering that the PlayStation versions of the game will also feature exclusive content, including an additional dungeon, a shopkeeper's cosmetic set, and an exclusive in-game Hogsmeade shop, if that's something that interests you. It's worth keeping that in mind. Over on Ubisoft's side of things though, they're looking for playtesters to try out an upcoming Star Wars project. Massive Entertainment, which is a Ubisoft studio, tweeted about the opportunity and said they're prioritising applications from people living close to Malmö in Sweden so that they can participate in physical playtests at the studio. The team's sign-up page states, Your opinion is what drives us, and by becoming a playtester, you have the opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about our games. Even more importantly, we get to see how you, the player, interact with the game. Anyone is welcome, and we need all types of players in order to make the best games possible. We don't have any other information about the game yet, not even its name, and if you do get to playtest it, you will of course have to sign an NDA to keep it private until they're ready for their reveal, which could be within the next year but we don't know for certain. But that's all we have time for this week. If you have any thoughts on anything discussed this week, please leave it in the comment section below as always, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.